Welcome to another edition of the NFL Power Ranking Show presented to you by Energizer. This is the, as we call it here, the Week 20 edition. In our studios in Los Angeles, my name is Andrew Siciliano. On the other side of the screen, in a frozen, frigid Chicago, which just got the news that Caleb Williams is entering the 2024 NFL Draft. Eric at home, good to see you. Good to see you, too. This is the pound for pound, the best round, right? Uh, don't we agree? The divisional round? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, after watching a super wild card round that saw the average margin of victory sit at 17.3. And that includes, keep in mind, the fact that Sunday night in Detroit, it was a one-point game. One-point game. In so, yeah. Is that insane? Impactful games. Like, yes. games that had... Purpose, but not exactly the tightest ones. I think this round will be a little better, but yes, it is very much insane. All right, as always, Eric has done the rankings and they're on NFL.com. You can get to them immediately by scanning the QR code right there on the screen. Kids, don't get too close to the television. Your grandmother will get mad at you. The Ravens are number one. The Niners are number two. They are the two number one seeds. They had the weekend off. They watched on their couch and they have not changed. We'll get to them in a second. The Bills are up one. They are number three. The Lions are up one. They are number four. We're going to focus only on these four teams right now. And, and as we start this, I know there are people at home going, wait a minute. All you're doing is rearranging the 14 teams that made the playoffs. Yes. However, I will make an argument later that a couple of the teams were so bad they should be dropped from the top 14. However, Eric, they do not include these top four. The Ravens are one. They get the Texans coming up as it's all chalk in the AFC. I would actually argue that with maybe Mark Andrews coming back and with Dalvin Cook waiting in the wings, the Ravens got better during their bye. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, well, as far as, far as personnel, uh, personnel and who could be available, no question about it. And you know, did they need the rest? Obviously got some guys rested in, uh, in week 18. Not everybody played uh, against the Steelers in that one. It was bad conditions out there. So, yeah, I mean, I think they're at full strength and they've had the bulk of that time to, to look back at 2019 and the failures that were. I mean, everybody wrote their stories. Is this going to be another repeat of 2019? I don't think so, but they do have a stiff challenge and I think things are set up maybe a little bit better, even though that was a pretty dominant team that went, that won 14 games not long ago. No, it's a dominant team here, and it was a dominant team in 2019, and they're facing a very good team of the Houston Texans, a team they beat in week number one. Obviously, a lot has changed for the Texans since then. We'll get into them a little bit later. That was C.J. Stroud's first start, didn't throw a touchdown, got sacked four times. Um, listen, he's better. Matter of fact, I, I think he's great. It's, it's funny oh, yeah. they beat Joe Flacco, the old elite conversation with Joe Flacco. We're going to have that elite conversation pretty soon, if not already, here for C.J. Stroud. So the Ravens are one. The Niners are two. The big thing for the Niners is get healthy during their bye. They have time to rest. And now they get the Packers coming to town. And honestly, not to take away from Green Bay, it sets up nicely here for Kyle Shanahan. It does, yeah. I mean, Green Bay is obviously a very dangerous team, but I think the most important development was Philly blowing the lead, allowing the 49ers to clinch in Week 17, rest guys in Week 18, have this bye. They're in terrific shape. I guess you worry about offensive rhythm coming out or whatever. Joe Barry's defense has played much better for Green Bay, but I think they would take that uncertainty over knowing the fact that they got Christian McCaffrey a lot of rest. He's going to be used pretty heavily, I would imagine, in this game. And if they win going forward, Debo Samuel on down the line. So, yeah, health was a big, big storyline last year in the playoffs. They're determined not to make it one, I think, this year. And, yeah, other than the Baltimore game, they look pretty darn good down the stretch. Look, they have to be happy sitting here watching at home and getting healthy. The Cowboys are out. The Eagles are out. I know they beat them both and beat them both handily, but the Rams are out as well. And while Kyle has owned Sean of late the last four or five years in the regular season, obviously in the postseason, Rams beat him a couple of years ago in the NFC Championship game. To me, those were possibly, all due respect to the Lions, their three biggest threats. Eric, those three threats are gone. Yeah, it, it's certainly a, a different field than we expected. I think coming in, obviously the Lions are a legitimate team and we have to take them seriously as a as a Super Bowl uh, candidate. But, you know, it's crazy to step back and think 
one of the following is going to start in the NFC for the Super Bowl. It's going to be Brock Purdy. It's going to be Jordan Love. It's going to be Baker Mayfield or Jared Goff. That's who we're down to on that side of the field. And, you know, you put it through that lens and it really kind of changes your perspective on, on what it's going to look like. So, yeah, I'll be fascinated to see how this all works out. But uh, it's still a pretty, uh, pretty interesting feel. Like, even though you said, I think things have kind of really – lined up pretty well if they could somehow slow down this Packers offense. I, I love the Baker Mayfield, Jared Goff, former number one pick redemption tour possibility there mm -hmm. for the Super Bowl. Clearly, Goff has the better shot right now, the clearer path than Baker, but whatever. All right, let's get to the Bills. They are your new number three team, Eric. They are up one in the week 20, the divisional round power rankings. Josh Allen uh, did what they needed him to do, be Superman, but without the kryptonite. He didn't turn the ball over. He, he rushed for this 52-yard touchdown. By the way, we agree. That was not a fake slide. That was a pitter-patter of the feet, guys. That was not. Do we agree that was not a fake slide, Eric? I didn't even know people were arguing that. Steelers no, fans are slide. angry. The Steelers oh, drafted the guy who, whose fake slide in college football changed the rules, and then he bragged about it. Anyway, I digress here. <laughs> it wasn't a fake slide. Josh Allen now gets Mahomes at home. Yeah, I think they were saying it's a fake slide to cover for Patrick Peterson not being able to catch a quarterback, but, uh, uh, you know, I digress. Yeah, this is setting up, I think, the way everyone wanted it. Not Steelers fans, obviously, not Dolphins fans, but the rest of the neutral observing football universe had to, you know, grip for the idea that we're going to have another Allen Mahomes game. This one in Allen Park, though. I mean, this, in Orchard Park, I should say, rather. It and could be Allen Park. Pretty interesting. It could be Allen Park. Yeah. You're right, yeah. I, it'll be Allen Park if he wins this game. And uh, the last time they met there, kind of a strange outing in 2020. I kind of throw that one out. The rest of them have been classics, and I, I expect nothing less. Allen's at the peak of his powers. We saw what Mahomes can do again last week. Bill's defense, can they be healthy? Can they hold on? Are some of these injuries going to gonna bite them in the end? I don't know. That's the big question I'm kind of left with. The big one being Terrell Bernard, who was carted off with the ankle injury. He has played so well. And remember, no Matt Milano and no Tredavious White and no Jordan Phillips. The hits keep on coming for that Bill's defense. But they get him at home. They get the Chiefs at home. Third time in four years they meet in the postseason. And first time Mahomes is going to play a playoff game other than a Super Bowl, obviously, outside of their building. When last they met, it's so crazy how things change down the stretch when last these two teams met Eric you and I sat here and said this is the Bills season and really the Bills soul as they're constructed on the line right they went to Arrowhead that article had been written about Sean McDermott you're like this is it they are on the brink and then Kadarius yep. Tony lined up offsides the Bills got their win and it's been like a march towards Vegas since then and I cannot wait for this one, the best divisional, uh, obviously the best weekend of the football year. All right, let's celebrate the Lions here. You know, I worked for the Rams. I wanted the Rams to win that game, but I'm happy for Jared Goff. As I said last week, I would be if they won. You got the fans crying. You got Brad Holmes yelling in an elevator. The Lions are up one spot. They are four this week in the power rankings. Yeah, I mean, I, some people may disagree. Some people feel like maybe they got a little lucky there. Obviously, the Rams had kind of turned the tide of that game. Everyone bracing for that that comeback victory, that fourth quarter victory that Stafford pulled off a lot of times in Detroit. But Jared Goff completes the biggest pass in his in his career. Not the the toughest, not the prettiest, but the, the most important pass of his career. Hadn't completed one or almost a quarter at that point. So after the hot start, he really needed to finish that game off. He did. What a moment for him, right? And what it just what a relief, I think, for the Detroit Lions fans who, you know, braced for this utter, you know, heartrending disappointment. It didn't happen. And now they they're favorites in this game coming up. Second straight home playoff game, unheard of time. First of all, the state of Michigan, right? With yeah. like, the Wolverines, Harbaugh, and this, it is on fire right now in the football world. So I can't imagine what's going to go down this weekend, but they have to feel like, okay, now we're the hunted, right? I can understand a lot of people picking the Rams, but they have to feel like they have need to take care of business in this game and not let the emotions kind of uh, kind of ruin the day. You see that uh, hug there, that embrace between Goff and Stafford at the end of the game. I, I recommend inside the NFL or check out the NFL Films Twitter yeah. page here. It's a great moment in which – Stafford tells Goff, hey, go win this thing. I'm happy for you. And then Jared, a couple of seconds later, after they had walked away, Jared circles back 
and says, basically, you're one of the toughest you-know-whats I've ever seen. Like, legendary toughness here. Like, respect, because Matthew Stafford, that should have been a flag, by the way, for roughing there, um, got up at the end, and his hand was banged up, and he was banged up, and he kept on slinging it. And uh, he is a warrior, a, a football warrior, obviously. Not a real warrior, but you know what I'm saying here. So the Lions right, are yeah. number four. We'll get to the Rams a little bit later. We'll get to the Texans as well. How about the Packers? Where do they land? Should the Eagles even be in these rankings? That's coming up on the NFL Power Ranking Show presented by Energizer. All right, here we go. Let's keep rolling to the NFL Power Ranking Show presented to you by Energizer. The QR code side of the screen that says scan me. You can scan it and see what we have here on NFL.com. The Chiefs are up two. They are five. The Texans up three. They are six. Look at the Packers up six. They are seven. The Cowboys plummet. Are they really a top ten team? Uh, they are eight. And the Buccaneers are up three. They are nine. Think about this, and we will later. The Bucs are behind the Cowboys. The Bucs are playing next weekend. The Cowboys are not. All right, at home, the Chiefs are five. I think a lot yeah. of teams prove their critics right this weekend. I think the Chiefs, though, might be the only team that truly proved their critics wrong. They look fine. Yeah, I thought they did, right? I mean, they, they were prepared for the environment. Obviously, Miami wasn't, um, you know, it was sort of a, a, you know, start to finish, really solid performance. I mean, Mahomes played well, dealt with some of the early drops, got Kelsey going eventually. You know, it, it just sort of felt like they were they were very well prepared for this game, understanding that there was criticism about their game understanding and knowing that people weren't going to be picking them to win the Super Bowl and that they probably have to go on the road the following week. That was just the reality of it. And they took care of business because they've been in this situation so many times. Will that carry over? I tend to think so. I think they'll play well. I don't think they're going to come in there and get embarrassed. But, yeah, they had to have this kind of a performance. If they kind of lucked their way into this next game, I don't think there would be as much sentiment for them being, quote, unquote, back as as – as we know them to be anyway. Yeah, I agree. And I will admit where I am wrong. I, I thought the Chiefs were the better team. I know they're the better team. Um, I mm. did pick the Dolphins when I did an Instagram video making all the picks Saturday morning because I felt that the Dolphins would be able to get the ground game going. And I thought the ground yeah. game, with the weather as the equalizer, would be the difference here. And I was absolutely wrong. Taylor Swift is a great chair dancer. The environment was was all Kansas City. And the, yeah. the Dolphins just shriveled up. And, you know, the Dolphins are another one of these teams that can run, run up the score in September but can't do it in January. We see it again. Last year was Kyler Thompson, I realized. Okay, this year was Tua. And they couldn't do it. I, I know they have the defensive yep. injuries, but the offense didn't show up. They had a 50-yard touchdown on an underthrown ball with a DPI. I mean, that's your only positive offensive play. All right, I digress. Let's get to the sixth seed. Your sixth-ranked team, that is. That is the Texans. Super impressive. Um, up three. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were one of the teams that, that proved their critics wrong, but um, I am not one of these people that doubted C.J. Stroud. I, matter of fact, I think those that doubted him shut up in September, and they've been silent since. Yeah, anybody left still questioning him, even prior to that game, I think uh, has to reevaluate their, their football observation a little bit. Now, look, obviously he could come out and get humiliated by the Ravens. I just don't see it happening, though, Andrew. I really think he's... He's past that level, right? Not that we say he can't have a bad game, but, you know, the, the bad game he had in week one against Baltimore, you know, four sacks, no touchdowns. I don't think that's the kind of game he's going to have this weekend. I think he's going to come in prepared, confident. Yes, he doesn't have uh, Tank Dell or Noah Brown and short some weapons, but I think they're going to go in there with all kinds of house money, nothing to lose, knowing that. You know, had they converted those three field goals into touchdowns in week one, it's a different story. Plus, they've come so far since then as a team. D'Amico Ryans, we didn't know anything about his coaching ability then. Now we've seen. He's been he's brought this team together. Stroud was hurt. Will Anderson was hurt. Both were the best rookies on either side of the ball. I thought this season went healthy. So they got a lot going for him. And, and I think they'll go in there and, and uh, give the, the, the Ravens a test. Yeah. And a year ago today, 
right now, a year ago today, we are 10 days into the I can't believe Lovey Smith and Davis Mills screwed up so badly, <laughs> you know, tongue in cheek, that they are now stuck with the number two pick. And think about where we are they, they today. They used it pretty well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it worked out just fine. And it worked out great as well for the Green Bay Packers. Speaking of good coaching and good quarterback play, the Packers are making power moves. Power moves presented by Energizer. They are up six. They are your number seven team. As you and I record, Kyle Shanahan on Tuesday is on the podium saying, among other things, Christian McCaffrey is a full participant this week and also saying that his staff – started getting ready for the Packers midway through the second quarter of their win Sunday over the Cowboys. That's how thoroughly bludgeoned they uh, – that's how, how badly they beat the Cowboys. It's nice to get that little hour and a half, two hour uh, jump start on your on your prep work, right? Obviously, they've been sitting around waiting. They watched this game unfold, and it turned out they they uh, they didn't waste any time. They were uh, they were right to prepare for Green Bay. And look, the way this offense is playing right now, I think you need extra time to prepare for it because, boy, it, it looked like the Cowboys had no real answers for either Jordan Love or Aaron Jones, who you know, since coming back from injury has been probably one of the most productive uh, backs in the league, led the NFL in rushing the final four weeks of the season. So, you know, it's like, I think I know who's more important, but you could make a legitimate case that Aaron Jones, especially against that Niners run defense, uh, is almost as valuable as Love could be in this game. Sure. And homecoming game for Love, it's just, I think Green Bay will will absolutely give them a lot to handle defensively. The question is, can they stop things on the other side? And I don't know about that. Look, similar system, certainly offensively, same tree. Defensively yeah. here as well. This is the youngest team of the NFL, the Packers, that is, coming in to face an experienced team, but still with a young quarterback in Brock Purdy. Um, you have kids all over the board, but you have key veterans like Aaron Jones um, that make such a difference here. Uh, this was a team in midway through the season that a lot of people thought uh, it wasn't working. As we see Sad Jerry Jones talking about the Packers, it is working. They are hot, and I give them a puncher's chance here. Not a great chance, but a puncher's chance in Santa Clara on Saturday against the 49ers. Now let's get to the team they beat. We see Sad Dak Prescott, Sad Jerry Jones, okay? You have, Eric, the Dallas Cowboys as your number eight team. They were three. Now they are eight. Why should they even be in the top 10 when they flame out this badly? They are the summer blockbuster with the huge budget that all the kids are talking about. <laughs> now, when it gets to Oscar time, they get shut out because there's no substance. Yeah. Oh, this is why I don't watch the Oscars, right? I don't, I don't have to worry about all that stuff. Angry, right? Midwest man, <laughs> a, a, angry man in Midwest says, I don't watch Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try to think of it this way. And it was, this is my first year doing the power rankings. And I've always asked myself, like, okay, if these two teams met on a neutral field, meaning, like, let's take the Bucks and Cowboys, if they met in Huntsville, Alabama, who would be favored in that game? I maintain the Cowboys would be a, a four or five point favorite in that one if they went against the Bucks, even after what we saw last week. So maybe I'm wrong about that. I still think head to head, Dallas is a better team, but there's no discounting what happened on the field. There's no. Uh, you know, whitewashing anything that occurred. It was an ugly franchise shifting performance, right? This was the rug being pulled out from under them like we've seen before. And where do you go from here if you're Jerry? I don't, where, do you blow everything up? Do you try to import a Vrabel or a Belichick and, and fix this thing on, on the quick? And is that going to happen? I mean, you still got to worry about Dak too. He's got a huge cap number next year. Huge. CD's got to be extended. Yeah, I mean, it's... I don't want to say it was Super Bowl or bust, but it certainly feels like that now talking about them. Yeah, yeah. Dak's cap number is like 55, something near yeah. 60 million. They got to do something. So likely you have to commit to paying him another $150 million guaranteed. That's what you got to do. Extend him. That, that, that's, that's what you got to yeah. do. You got to extend him. You got to take the number down. This contract was, was written to be redone right now after this season. Yep. And this season ended far earlier than they thought it would end. All right, I, I want to – tie the Eagles in here as well because the NFC East is the only division, Eric, that will not be represented on divisional weekend. The Eagles lost 
horribly. Man. They folded six out of seven down the stretch. You have them at 13 down two. We're going to skip ahead a little bit here. Why should they even be in the top 14? I, I don't think – I think they should be out of the power rankings here, honestly. If there was a Buffalo Bills-like team, remember the Bills went into week 18. We didn't know if they were going to make the playoffs. Obviously, they are now. But if there was that kind of a team that missed out where, where we were saying, boy, had they gotten in, they would have been a handful. Maybe the Saints, who actually quietly played pretty well down the, down the stretch, you could make an argument for. But the Steelers lost, and I have been questioning them up and down all season. So it's more of a hierarchy thing. I get your argument, right? The way they played the final seven games? I mean, seven. even with the Giants win, seven games is a massive chunk of the season, right? It's almost 40%. So it's not like you can just sort of you know push this to the side and say, well, they were great at 10-1. and one. I even had a few questions then. So I don't know, man. Yeah, this is... This is as bad as it gets, but I thought the Steelers were a worse team, and that's the only reason I could, could sneak both in. No, I get it. Bad team, bad tape. They have crash-landed, and I would argue yeah. they don't deserve to be in the top 14. The Bucks do, however. The Bucks won. They're below the Cowboys. You have the Bucks at number nine, up three, Eric. Um, talk to the angry Buck fans that think they should be higher. Well, look, there were some drop passes early. They let, they settled for yeah. some field goals. They got a little dicey there for a second after Jalen got got warm. But you know, you're beating an AJ Brownless Eagles team that was trending, you know, you know worse than than any stock that I've bought in the last five years. So yeah, I, I just didn't think that this was as impressive a win at home over a team that that was going in one direction only. But they're competitive. Todd Bowles has done a really nice job since his name came up as a you know, as a possible name to watch to get fired. I don't think that's happening. Baker's done a great job. You know, it's it's fun to watch their progression this season, and I give them a lot of credit. I just don't know that they're a better football team pound for pound than what the Dallas Cowboys were. And Baker on the podium on Monday night said, this is our last home game. Baker, there's actually a shot you can host the NFC Championship game. If you beat that's the true. Lions and the Packers beat yeah. the Niners, there could still be a game at Raymond James. You mentioned buying stocks coming up. Let's... Let's buy some futures. Shall we do that as we continue on the NFL Power Ranking Show presented by Energizer? It's the NFL Power Ranking Show presented by Energizer as we show you teams 10 through 14, the Rams, the Browns, the Dolphins, and then the two teams from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, the Eagles at 13 and the Steelers at 14. Time to invest in the future, presented by Fidelity, Eric, at home. Why are you buying the Rams? I'm with you, by the way, but you tell me. Yeah, I mean, I think the emergence of, of Puka, certainly this season, yep. I mean, incredible rookie year. Kyron Williams showing he can be a lead back, repairing that offensive line. And look, I don't know how long they've got left in Matthew Stafford, but when he was healthy, when he was on the field, as you pointed out several times throughout the season, he was great. So, you know, you squeeze a little more out of Cooper Cup, you add pieces of that defense. I, I think there's an interesting future. Plus, you revived Sean McVay. I mean, he admitted in the postgame mm -hmm. uh, you know, press conference, he found his way again. And, you know, that's that's a, an important piece of that whole puzzle. I don't know what Aaron Donald does, but I like their future. Yeah, and they might lose Raheem Morris. I hope they do, by the way, and on, yes. on a personal yep. level. I hope he gets another shot at, at being a head coach because he deserves another shot. But the future truly is bright for this team, and I think it's bright as well for the Browns. Granted, they need to get the Deshaun Watson, Eric, that we saw that went 14 for 14 to the perfect passer rating with a broken shoulder to beat the Ravens on the road. It was his high point, and then very shortly and his after, last his point. low point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he mic drop, I guess, but all eyes clearly on him this offseason. Now they get back an amazing amount of talent, all the guys who got hurt throughout the season, but we'll see what happens with the coaching staff. Any changes there? Does Flacco come back as a number two? I mean, no. all options, I guess, would be on the <laughs> table. <laughs> I would love to see it. But, yeah, this is this is going to be a very, very interesting team to watch. They have the pieces. Can they put it all together and find that magic one more time? Not always easy. No. And when I say no, that, that's not saying I wouldn't want to see that. I just don't think it is feasible so nor likely. Regardless, what is feasible and likely is that we are back to do this again after Divisional Weekend. All right, so we'll see you next week on the NFL Power Ranking Show presented by Energizer. For Eric, I'm Andrew. So long.